Hi, this is Natalie from Namaste Farms, and today I'm going to teach you how to make my bobble yarn. Okay, first of all, I need a core, a cotton core, and this is 10-2 mercerized cotton. And I want to make sure that I'm not going to over twist it, so I don't want to spin in the direction, whether it's S or Z, that it was last spun on. So I, all, I think I've said this before, what I do is I twist it in my fingers, and I try to see whether this twist is opening up or if it's getting tighter. And so it, this, I can just tell that it's not going to kink if I turn it to the left. So I know I'm going to have to go to the left. And I spin back and forth constantly on the same skein of yarn because I don't like it to be kinked, and everybody knows that. Okay, you want mohair. So to make the bobble yarn, you have to have mohair, and I don't use roving for it. I use just the picked locks. And so I want to start with something that's been picked and that's, you know, pretty loose and pretty fine, really fine, and so this is probably kid mohair, and I'd say it's, the staple's probably about five inches. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to literally spin it. I'm going to start spinning like it's going to be just a regular core yarn here. And, okay, this first part you're going to go, okay, well, so what? What's new about that? Nothing's new about this first part, but what I'm going to show you how to get the bobbles, because, you know, there's that beehive yarn and all these other kinds of yarns that are made with roving. And since I don't like to use roving, I had to figure out a way to do it myself with um, picked locks. Okay, so here, what I'm going to do, I want to release my tension a little bit because I don't want it really pulling out of my hands because I'm going to have to put my, my hand at a 45 degree angle and I'm going to have to roll it to make the bobble. I'm going to have to let it roll on here. And so I'm going to pick it with my hand and pull it out because I'm going to want to make this like little bobbly thing. And I'm going to want to lock it down with a piece at the end so it's sort of just like this oblong thing. Right? Now I'm going to pull it off and what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrunch it. I want to scrunch it both ways so that I have, you know, maximum amount of fiber in one place. Okay? And it doesn't matter if it looks messy because we're going to fix that later. It's going to be semi-fixed. Right? Okay. So I'm just going to try to join right where I left off. And I'm kind of letting the core wrap around the mohair, right? So, and right when this goes in, I'm gonna to wanna to make another one. Cause I want them kind of be, to be evenly spaced apart. And we've talked about that. I, I like asymmetry, but, but I like it to be somewhat uniform so that you don't have holes in your knitting. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep doing this and see it kind of got long and weird. And that's no problem. Cause what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push it up and push it. And this yarn takes a while to make. Then I'm going to go ahead and add on, there you go. I'm going to do the same thing at a 45 degree angle. I'm just going to start adding this, these locks. And if it starts to get overspun and over kinked, I can just, I'll just start spinning the other way. Literally, I'll just turn my wheel and I'll start going this way. And I can still add on. Okay, let's do that. It'll start catching, and it'll go ahead and add on. It's not actually going to unspin because this stuff, it ends up sticking to itself. See, I spun the other way, and I still was able to get a bobble out of it. Okay, and I'm going to add some pink. And you kind of have to, you know, you want to use light colors. You don't want it to be too busy. So I always make my core that's like somewhat the same color as my... Um, my locks, because I you just don't I don't like the yarn that's too busy and looks like um, we didn't have any method to what we're doing. Okay, here made another bobble. Just scrunch it up, and I'm gonna just keep adding on. And like I said, if I start to feel like it's too kinked, I am going to spin the other way. And it's picking up a little bit of this um, fleece that's in my lap, but I don't really care because this, this yarn is not a perfectionist yarn. I mean, this is, if you're a perfectionist and you want things exactly even, this is not the yarn for you. So I'm spinning the other way now and this, the spin illusion wheel, I'll tell you that this is one of the reasons why I love it because I didn't even have to do anything. It just catches going the other direction for art yarns. I just don't think you can get any better wheel than this. It's got a giant orifice, it doesn't hang up on things, and you can just continually spin back and forth. And it's got a brake that I love, that I'm constantly using. Okay. Okay. And you don't want this part, where you, this part to have too much fiber on it, because you want there to be a lot of um, definition between this bobble and um, the base piece. 
just going to join this back on, sticking really nicely to this mercerized cotton. And you kind of have to be ambidextrous. I use my left and my right hands together all the time. I'm always using, you know, some, some people only use one for one thing, and like they draft with one, and they add on with another, and I, I just am always going back and forth just depending on where I need to put more fiber. Okay, there's another, and I like this one, but that one's a pretty one, that orange looks really pretty. Okay, and it's getting over kinked, so I'm gonna go the other way. A lot of people don't know that you can spin back and forth. Um, I think it's because their wheels don't do it, but you can, and it doesn't come undone, especially when you have a core. Okay, I have to, I'm going to, I'm going to show you that there's a phase to this that really makes it, really makes the yarn and makes it stable because right now there's a lot of air in these baubles, like it's not, because you don't want this big weighty chunky piece of fiber in here, you know, you want it to have a lot of air. So the question is if you're going to, um, if you're going to full it or you're going to, you know, wash it afterwards, how is it going to stay together? And I'm going to show you. So let me just get a little more on this one. Because I don't like, I like it to be full in the middle and not have a big dip. And they often want to have a dip in the middle for some reason. Okay. I'm just going to keep adding on. Do another one. Remember, this 45 degree angle is really, really important. And you have to be patient. Okay, okay we're going to cut for a minute and we're going to take it over to the sink and I'm going to show you what I do next. Okay, so I put it on the Nitty Naughty and this is only like four yards or something because I didn't want to belabor the point, but um, which usually I, I really like to do, but um, I didn't want to bore you. So I'm going to take it, and this water, I already made sure it was hot, and so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see, this is what it looks like before I've done anything to it. Now, I could have left it like this, but this isn't very stable. These aren't stable, right? Because they're just barely wrapped on and there's tons of air in them. So that's, I had to figure out a way that it could be stable. So I'm going to take this water, super hot, and I'm just going to wet it like this. Okay, now I'm going to, this is where the genius comes in. Each one of these is going to have to be felted with my hand. So I'm going to put some unicorn in it, and I don't want to have it straight unicorn. You know, I just want to dab it all over, you know. I put just like a couple drops in my hand, and I'm going to make sure that each portion of this has got it on, because see how it's not stable now? I'm going to take and I'm going to patch it back on. Remember how I told you we want to get it like, um, we want to make a uniform area. We want to make it in the middle, and now I'm going to do this. and wrap it if you have to, you just patch it on. Whatever you have to do. I'm not smashing it with my hands, I'm leaving a lot of, um, a lot of room in my hands because I don't want it to be like this really yucky felted ball. But this is a problem one, but that's okay. By the time I get done with it, it'll be fine. So this yarn takes time, 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 time. That's the thing. Okay, there. So and I'm going to push it. So I want it to look like a bobble. Do it again. Push it. And I can add more fiber on if I really want to. Right. Okay. Now I'm going to move down here to another bobble. And like I said, don't smash them. Do the best you can to not smash them. It'll all come. It'll all be fine once it dries. 
You just want to make sure that it's on there tightly. Okay, here's a bigger one. And this one wasn't such a problem one. Okay, same thing here. And I just go down and I just do this to every single one of them. And see this one kind of came undone a little bit, so I'm just going to push it. Push it, make it more uniform. Get it back up here where it belongs. And you can't miss one. You have to make sure every single one of them is done. Sometimes the fiber sticks, you know, on the other strand, which is no problem. You just have to sort of deconstruct it. And pull it apart, no problem. And this yarn is the yarn that is in that baby pouch. And Kimberly McAlinden is making, she's a pattern designer. She is making the pattern for that and is going to offer it for sale. So that baby pouch is like, takes like four hours to make and you can use your hand spun yarn with it. And it's, I mean, honestly, I have had more requests for that baby pouch. And finally, Kimberly's had the time to be able to uh, make, you know, write the pattern. And so that will be available at, um, at Hooked on Knitting. Facebook, Hooked on Knitting, or you can just write Kimberly McAlinden on Facebook. Or, of course, you can get in touch with me and I will forward you her email. But it's going to be so, it'll be a great gift for Christmas for somebody who has a baby. And this, you can really stretch this out. I mean, it's time consuming to make, but you alternate this yarn with, um, with a commercial, like in a base color. I would have used a turquoise base color. And see, like these ones, you just keep doing this. This is what we're going to do for the entire thing. And then we're going to set it out to dry, and we're going to add some um, other things to it to make it even prettier. And we'll show you that in a little bit. Okay, so here we are, and the yarn is finished drying. And i got to be honest with you, a couple of them I was a little concerned with, and I haven't made yarn in probably, I don't know, six months, and certainly there's not this yarn at least a year, so I was like, oh, maybe it's not going to be so good, but it's beautiful. The one that I was having a lot of trouble with, here it is. I mean, the one that was falling off, the first one that I was trying to, my bobble that I was trying to, like, felt back on, and it's perfect. And so here, I'm going to hold it up. This is what it looks like. There's no kinks in it, because remember, I kept spinning back and forth, back and forth, and so there's no kinks in this part and, and you don't want, like I said, you don't want those kinks. They're hard places with no air and they don't knit very nicely. So now what I would do is I would pick a like color Hannah Silk ribbon. And so this is Hannah Silk and I don't really have one that I think looks that great with it. I think this blue is too Robin's egg-ish. It's like, you know, Tiffany's blue. And this is sort of more of a sea film. So I probably would pick maybe something like this. And so I would go along and I would cut a ribbon and once you do put the ribbon on, there's no more, you, you can't put it in the water because this ribbon now, it will be ugly, right? So I would go and I would, at the bottom or the top of like every other bobble, because remember I tried to space them out evenly, I would just tie a ribbon, a silk ribbon. And I like this Hannah silk ribbon because even though when you take pictures of it, it looks like you can see a, it's kind of, it has a grain to it. Um, it doesn't look like that in real life. I don't like how, how the Hannah Silk photographs, to be honest with you, but I love it in, in actuality. In practical use, I like it. So I'll just go along, and only on one side with just a little bit of a tail. And I, and I do this just because I think it just adds a little bit of, I don't know, it just adds something. And I don't ordinarily like ribbon on yarns, but for some reason I just do on this one. And you don't want to make it gaudy. Anyhow, okay, so... We're going to wrap this up. If you have any questions, you can email me at littleeatmac.com. You can find me on Facebook, Namaste Farms. We also have a Ravelry group. This was brought to you by OH Cruise and their perfection line of feeds. I want to thank you so much for watching. Happy spinning.